Hello and welcome to this now casting edition of Cold Shots in the Evening. I'll be your host, Brett Wiley, along with my co-host, Joe Toth, here with me. And we're taking a look at the current surface map. And you see our big winter slash rainstorm slash windstorm <laughs> down here in the Gulf of Mexico. It's, at, it's down to 1,008 millibars and really impressive precip shield spreading up into the southeast. So, Joe, what are we expecting over the next 24 to 36 hours? Well, what we're expecting is the system that's currently uh, intensifying in the Gulf of Mexico to continue to move towards the southeast as we head into your uh, Tuesday. And as the day progresses, it's going to continue to slowly move up to the uh, east coast. And it should be over our area by Tuesday night into Wednesday, producing very heavy rain and potentially very strong winds as well. Yep. I think you meant the northeast, right? Yes. Okay. Just making sure there. And one thing to note is that the high pressure area, uh, 1032 millibar here, was earlier today it was over here, over North Carolina and Virginia. And that's moving off to the east, which is key to let this just ride up right, uh, probably probably along the I-95 corridor over the coming, again, 24 to 36 hours. And because the, because the high will be moving east and not to the north, there will not be any cold air to, uh, for any kind of wintry precip for the I-95 corridor or points east. Or even, even points west will have a tough time staying all wintry precip, probably get a long interval of rain over most areas that receive precipitation from the storm because of that warm air. Now moving on to the satellite imagery, again, Joe was pointing out some uh, pretty impressive thunderstorms firing up in the Gulf of Mexico, and that'll be hitting Florida in the form of uh, severe weather, uh, high winds, very pretty strong to severe thunderstorms. So Joe, how will that, you know, how will that affect the rainfall uh, for the I-95 corridor and further northeast? Well... This is a system right now, and, and we, we tend to see when golf, golf systems tend to develop there, we get lots of moisture, and we can see already, it's only the beginning, and we're seeing lots of moisture going across the southeast. So as this intensifies, it's going to continue to bring lots of golf moisture, and it's going to overrun all that the warm air into the colder air, and that's going to produce lots of precipitation. And as it heads up the uh, coast here, Along and just to the west of the track is where I think we'll see the heaviest rainfall. And the heaviest rainfall could actually be right along the I-95 corridor. Yeah, definitely. And with the, with the heaviest rainfall there, areas just to the east along the coast and up into eastern New England will probably experience the highest winds with 60 to perhaps 70 mile an hour gusts right along the coast. And I think especially up when you get into eastern New England they're pretty well known for getting the highest winds in these kind of setups. Uh, so, as we as we look at uh, the satellite here, you get the you got the classic comma shape already. It's yep. very it's very Superstorm ninety three like, wouldn't you say? I mean, it's not obviously not quite as strong, but you get it it, it shows the same look. There's, yeah, there's it an does. Anomaly there. And also the the eastern side of the storm had some pretty strong winds, so this is pretty much similar to what we can see here and like you mentioned about uh, Long Island, coastal New Jersey and eastern New England could potentially see damaging wind gusts. For I-95 it's a big question because it all depends on where that's that low uh, tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah exactly. Now moving on to the advisories and warnings. We got some uh, pretty widespread advisor, winter storm advisory watches and warnings all throughout the interior area. Pretty Pretty much west of I-81 here, you're going to see pretty consistent advisories, watches, and warnings. But you also got here uh, wind watch, again, for eastern New England there, for Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, down to Long Island. And again, just to reiterate the winds, you see here on the NAM, see if we can get a little closer here. You see here, get a little closer. New Jersey's here, up into eastern New England, gusts, and this is what hour is this? This is uh, this is tonight or no tomorrow night? So this is going to be this is this by tomorrow. Uh, 6 oh, this is Wednesday. Wednesday evening. Well, Wednesday morning. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, it, it, obviously this these winds will spread up into eastern New England too. We see already gusts to sixty to seventy, with some gusts to seventy. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, but do you see this too? Some gusts to eighty just off the coast here. Yes, there's actually isolated spots. I, I can see here. Looks like it's right around Wallops Island here. Just off New Jersey, looks like there's uh, little pockets of uh, wind gusts near 80 miles per hour. Yep. So again, it's very similar to that uh, to, to that Superstorm 93 in that way, with these extremely <laughs> high winds, and like you alluded to, heavy rain. And I mean, I guess 93 didn't have that much rain, considering it was a lot of ice and snow for the I-95 corridor, but you get what I mean. Not as much yeah. cold air involved here. Yep. Uh, and that'll just about wrap it up. On this now casting edition of Cold Shots in the Evening, I've been your host, Brett Wiley, along here with my co-host, uh, Joe Toth. <laughs> Have a good night and enjoy the storm. And stay good safe. Good night, guys.